Hello, welcome back to the Velvet Lounge, and I am here with part two of what you can do with your less expensive or cheap buttons to create value, memories, and some really cool items. So um, hopefully you watched part one. Um, this is part two of that. And um, it's this will not be as long, but I just wanted to make sure I got in these items for you. Um, this one, I, I love this idea of taking the buttons that you have, arranging them in a way to create like other shapes. So this person obviously created a sheep. Um, and I love the way they use the black and the white buttons. So simple, so easy easy. I mean, you technically simply are drawing out your design, taking your buttons, dividing them by color, and you can see they used a variety of sizes. So you have larger buttons as well as smaller buttons, as well as really teeny tiny buttons. Um, and you can also see that each side does not have to be exactly the same. And the reason I'm telling you all of that is because anyone can do this. And for this, um, I would probably use like a Gorilla Glue um, because you want a stronger glue um, or Elmer's now has like um, a, a stronger glue that's competing with Gorilla Glue. Um, but I believe in giving the credit where it was originally due. So I would just use like a Gorilla Glue or that super strong Elmer's glue, not the regular one because eventually over time the buttons will fall off. And then what you can do is simply when you go out to tag sale, flea markets, look around your own house first. Um, if you have unused picture frames or you have a piece of artwork that no one really cares about, you could strip that out, create this artwork, recycle that old frame, especially if it has glass over it, to protect this. And you have something you don't even have to dust because it's protected. You just have to clean the glass once in a while. And you have something really cool and interesting to hang up in your house. Um, also, something like this would make a great gift. The only thing I would say, which I said in my first video um, on, you know, how to reuse these buttons is make sure you sign your artwork and date it. It just adds more meaning. This is amazing okay this is a bouquet of glass buttons um and they're actually strung through wire um to create this floral bouquet that is pretty freaking amazing um you're able to take that and obviously use it for your wedding maybe you're going to do a commitment ceremony or you're going to renew vows, like whatever it is. Maybe you have a gra you you have someone who's graduating from college, and these are their college colors, and they love buttons. You know what a great way you know to add that extra loving care and flair. I mean, who else is going to have a bouquet of buttons? This is you know one of the most unique items that I found out there for um, reuse of buttons. And these, you know, buttons are not the least expensive. These are probably something that's, you know, a few steps above being, you know, the cheaper buttons. But, you know, look at the value that was added by, you know, putting all of these together. I just think it's a great idea. Also, that would make a great centerpiece in the right vase. Um, once again, this is making, you know, artwork with buttons. You have Snoopy Snoop here, which once again, super easy design with the black and the white, um, you know, simple, you know, outline. And I love the way that they did outline this. It added that extra something to this that took it up a notch. And then you have the cowboy boot. And I actually saw a picture, which I probably should have included, of a... Um, animal. It was a bear, a Kodiak bear, and they actually used the different browns, blacks, and whites to create like the shadowing so that you could see the depth in the artwork that they created. It was really cool. Um, and, you know, that would be great for decorating a kid's room, obviously, a nursery. Um, like I said, just be aware, be safe, because buttons are small. They can cause choking, um, this is also a really, I think, unique idea, and it's one I didn't think of, 
but um, I actually is on um, a television show named Flea Market Flip, which comes on HGTV and The Great American Country, which is also called the GAC channel. Um, and this person was not on my episode, but she was on an episode, I'm going to say three or four episodes later. We won. She didn't win. That's fine. But, um, this came from her website of making rings out of buttons. And of course you're using your diminutive buttons here, or you're using your large big beauty show off buttons for this or a combination of the two. But most of these are made using like small, the round bead style button, but these are actual buttons. Um, this one is using a mother of pearl button on the bottom, a plastic button on the top, a glass button in the center. And the thing I don't know is how they attached it to the um, ring base. Like, I know that you can buy flat ring bases, so this could actually all be glued. Um, but these would have to be, like, sewn together or somehow put together and then put on top of a base. And I can see part of a base here, but it doesn't tell the secret of, you know, how that's attached. So that I thought was very interesting. Um, once again, another piece of wall art. And here, um, you know, you this I thought was interesting because, you know, you can always either cut out letters yourself or you can, of course, buy these pre-cut and they're really, really cheap. Um, and then this person actually covered this with um, some sort of material. It looks like burlap. But it looks lighter than burlap. Um, but you could actually use like old socks to do that. You could use old pieces of material from grandma's dress. You know, maybe you have a baby blanket from when you were young and you can actually decorate that. And then in the corner of each, they created these little like, you know, decorative clusters. And these are all buttons. So really cool idea. Great. You know, you may only want one letter. You might want to spell out the word love. Like I just think that was like such an interesting thing to do. And it takes up that whole letter thing to another level, I think, because most of the time when you see the letters, they're just like plain flat. They're white, they're red, they're green, but there's nothing really to them other than their letters. And the other thing I just thought of is if you um, are lucky enough to have the opportunity to recycle an actual letter from like, for example, we have a Firestone dealership um, or not dealership, I don't know what they're called, but they sell tires like four towns over from us. And they were actually swapping out their lettering and their um, branding for a more updated look. And the guy's like, I don't know what I'm going to do with all these letters. And I and back then, what we did is we took some of the letters and sold them in our shop. Um, but one of the ideas could have been, and we wouldn't have done this because we were just, you know, turning stuff over. But, you know, for someone who purchased it versus putting the F on their wall because their name is Fred, they could have taken taken that F and maybe have a bunch of military metal buttons where they could have, you know, um, decorated, you know, that letter or filled it all in. And then what you can also do is just lightly spray paint over it. Like, let's say instead of everything being a bronze gold color you want silver which might update the look or a stainless steel look they actually have metallic paints out there that are spray paints so you like you're you're only limited to your imagination and then this I was I wonder if I can make this larger um not really that sucks so let's not make it larger oh actually that's fine um, so this I thought was really cool and they actually used glue. So that's one thing to know is if you are going to decorate shoes and if you're going to wear them, or even if you're going, like I have a girl, I call it my girl's world closet. Um, so it's the size of a room. And so you can, there's like a bench for sitting, there's, um, you know, actually there's three benches in there for sitting. I have like a display top for like some of my little, um, personal items. 
that were given to me like by different people, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but this would be a great idea if you had like that old pair of shoes or sneakers or boots that you just loved and just were like, I don't care. I know I can never wear these, but I don't want to get rid of them. I have a pair of Doc Martens that are like that. And for me to replace the heels, it makes no sense. I might as well get a new pair. And so what I'm going to do, I decided after, and I found this today, is I'm going to decorate it using a bunch of my military and uniform buttons that are not, you know, expensive. And that's the thing. I mean, if you want to use your expensive buttons that, you know, might be worth $50, $60 by themselves, do that. I would, I, you know, advocate for kind of taking your cheaper, less expensive buttons or those that are slightly damaged in doing a lot of these arts and craft projects and different, you know, design elements that we just saw. Um, but that's what I'm going to do with my military and uniform buttons that, you know, are on the lower side as far as quality. And I'm going to decorate them using that and then use them as just a decoration in my, um, in my closet. So um, the other thing, though, with the shoes is, of course, you can make them where you know they could still be wearable and I don't know if this ever no it never uploaded but um like there are a lot out here where people purchased I'm assuming less expensive you know spiky heels and they decorated you know the heel in a different button like maybe they're all mother of pearl white and then the top of it is just a rainbow of different colors um, and all they did is glue the buttons all over the shoes. I saw a pair of ballerina flats that a lady was wearing. Um, and she made a matching pair, sort of matching, for her little baby daughter, who's probably, like, you know, two, three months old. Um, so that's a great way of preserving those baby shoes. And when I saw that, that was my first thought. Back in my day, they used to actually send your baby shoes away to get bronzed. Why not get them buttoned? Like, I think that's such a great idea. And I also think that it will stand the test of time um, as long as you use the right adhesive, of course. Um, but yes, yeah, so thank you guys for tuning in. Um, there are hundreds, hundreds of ideas out there. Decorate, you know, different things such as lampshades, window frames that are still on your house being used or a window frame that's no longer usable, but you don't want to get rid of them. There are a lot of people out there with wooden window frames just sitting around. Why not decorate the frame using buttons, clean the glass, and then stick photographs on the other side? Now you have a picture frame collage, but you also use your buttons to make it, you know, extra special. Um, once again, jewelry, you saw that is almost limitless. But thinking about men in jewelry, especially with the military buttons, uniform buttons, or maybe there's like, you know, some shape or maybe they like hunting or something. I actually sold some buttons that were in this, they were on figural elks, um, some antique buttons that I had, and those would make great cuff links. Um, there is a linking mechanism that you can buy to connect two buttons and literally within 30 seconds, you have a pair of cuff links. You can also, um, if you have like tie bars and maybe you don't like what's on the tie bar or the tie bar is plain, using um, that E, I think it, I should have looked it up. I think it's E61 or something like that. It's this, this industrial glue. You can actually glue on, you know, a flat, cool button on that and create it, a new updated um tie clip um you know so you can also and the reason I'm talking about that is like it's not just for men I'm sorry just not just for women but you can also do this stuff for men even the idea of you know let's say you have a dude that was in the military like my husband was um maybe he has you know a bunch of buttons and you know maybe even some medals and things that you know are ribbons or whatever and they're not, you know, a Purple Heart or some of the more prestigious metals, then you can actually take those in combination with the buttons and maybe take, you know, his military boots 
obviously get permission and you can maybe, you know, make something that he could decorate his walk-in closet with. Um, the other thing um, that I came up with is, do, 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 um, like the shadow box tables. Um, it would be really cool to not only have a shadow box that you hang on the wall or place on the table. Maybe it's the actual table. Like, all you need to do is find a bunch of, like, those trays glue them on or nail them on, you know, make sure you attach them appropriately to a tabletop that exists, fill each little hole with different buttons. Maybe there's, you know, everyone puts a family message in there, or maybe you just leave it as it is. Cover that with a piece of glass, or if you want to get into the resin that I spoke about, the liquid resin in the previous video, go check that out. Um, you will have something that is really unique and now it's worth, you know, hundreds of dollars if it's done correctly and if it's the right size. Um, rockabilly fashion. There's a lot of things that you could do with buttons to up your rockabilly game as well as your, in steampunk buttons are used pretty commonly. Um, but, you know, in steampunk, they're usually looking for the metal and the steel um, type buttons. So what I would say is, you know, remember there are metallic um, spray paints out there. You just have to be careful about how they marry with fabric, but great way to decorate a top hat. Um, awesome, once again, for shoes, belts, um, you know, different accessories that you would be wearing. Um, magic wands are, I don't know if they're still as in vogue, but I know, um, when the Harry Potter series was out there and uh, when Game of Thrones comes back, obviously for the final season, oh my God, what are we going to do? Um, uh, Khaleesi, but anyway, <laughs> what you can do is at the top of your wand, if you have a large enough button that makes sense, the shape does have to make sense to sit there so it doesn't just pop off you can actually use these as your wand toppers. So that's a great way to also get your kids involved in arts and crafts or something you could do at parties for them. Um, as well as the final thing I'll talk about is um, using it, well, a couple things. One, using it as a tiling material. So for backsplashes, you can act, why not use a bunch of different color buttons if that's what you're into. Um, maybe you don't want to throw these all around your kitchen but if you have your girl bathroom you know your girly bathroom or the kids have a bathroom um and you sort of do want to make this stand the test of time though so i would say be careful with the design if you make it too babyish for example when your kid is like eight they may not like it at all so then you're going to have to chip that off and put something else up there so just be aware of the design and try to make it last that test of time. And the other thing is I'm um, using it to decorate old cabinet doors. A lot of people are like, they're not really doing this as much, but when everyone was just jumping on a craze as usual, spending too much money, charging stuff up unnecessarily, um, just because they saw something on television or their neighbor did it, um, what they could do, especially if you have an arts and crafts style home, uh, but this would work for almost any home. It just depends upon how you design it. It's take, you know, keep the cabinet doors where they are um, and simply use, you know, the right adhesive that is key and map out the correct design that hopefully stands that test of time. I know I've said that many times here. And you can actually design something using different types of buttons. And yes, there maybe you use your buttons that are sort of in the medium value range versus the cheapest ones. But you could also do it with the cheapest ones and add other things into the fray to up your design credentials. And that would be really interesting to look at. And maybe you don't do it on every cabinet. You do it on a couple as an accent. And now you easily and inexpensively just updated your kitchen or your bathroom um, or your arts and craft room. The other thing you could do is for your larger buttons, 
um, is use them as pulls on boxes, on drawers. You know, you can actually adhere these to an existing pull in most cases if that existing pull is flat enough. Um, Doorknobs, you know, you can actually, you know, decorate those, reinstall them, and now you have an interesting doorknob. So, like I said, you're only limited by your own imagination. Um, please, down in the re in the comments, let me know if you're going to try any of these ideas, if you what you found to be the most interesting, if you've done anything, you know, as far as, you know, creating and upcycling with bite buttons before, um, let me know what that is, especially if I didn't cover it. And also, if you can simply take the millisecond to just give us a thumbs up, it literally takes a second to press the button. I would really appreciate it. More people will be able to find this when they're searching for things to do with buttons, the history of, the value of, and the identification of buttons. So thank you so much for tuning in. Have a great day. And thank you again for visiting the Velvet Lounge.